Okay. Now, before we then transition into now thinking about, like, this is all still, like, English sentences, right? We've got to really get this negating thing. So, if you haven't already made this, hey, let's do it. Right. Let's think about the negation of uh, each of these and see if we can unpack the logic of what's going on. If I say to you, what's the negation of P and Q? P and Q. Hmm. The negation means it's the exact opposite. Right? So everything that was true now becomes false. Everything that was false now becomes true. Yeah? So if you have a look at here's, here's P and Q, right? Okay. The negation of this statement has to flip everything here, right? So this would become false, and then these become true, true, true. Are you with me? So how would we state that? I could just list them, couldn't I, right? There's three things, uh, I'm going to put stars on them, one, two, three, that I want to be true. So, so I can just list these out, right? I could say uh, the first one in the top right hand corner is not P and Q, is one of them, right? Or it could be uh, not Q and P, that's the bottom left hand corner, um, or I'm just going to say not P and not Q. So I've just, I've just exhaustively listed them out. This would be correct, but boy does it look more correct, right? Is there a more succinct way that I could say, I kind of want to include this entire column and this entire row? Does it look familiar? Have we got language, even language on the board, that captures when you want to include everything in this and everything, you can even include, include both, right? Not P and not Q. What word do we use when we want to include both of them? Um, not P or not Q. Not P or not Q. Not Q. How does this work? Well, not P means as soon as you say not P, and you say or, you're including everything in this column. Is that okay? Tick, tick. But then saying not Q means you're also including everything in this row. And you leave in the possibility of having both. Does that make sense? That was actually the point we were just discussing with this inclusive or. So, some of you were saying to me before, why does and turn into or when you are negating a statement? And here is the answer, right? In order to make the negation of this guy, you have to include everything, all of the possibilities that were false before, we're now saying they're true. That's what a negation is. It's the opposite. So to capture all of them, you either write every single possibility, or you say, is there a more succinct way to capture those three statements that I think are true in one statement? Not P, not Q, just like you saw before here, but in reverse. Okay. Hmm. It's a bit weird, but I hope it becomes true out of this, um, or clear out of this tape. Let me pause for a second. Mr. Liz, do you have anything to add? No. We were, we were having long discussions and, um, I'm not going to say arguments, like we were, we were trying to work this out ourselves. We've told you this before, this is a new course. Um, I actually didn't formally study any of this when I was at university, so I'm learning it alongside you and kind of enjoying it, but it's also quite tricky, right? Okay. Have a minute. There's I'm a little out there. I yeah, had never seen a truth table before, as Mr. Wu had, and we were discussing whether we would introduce them or not. And I think, and can we get a bit of a gauge, are they helpful? To set it out in a table form, or is it more confusing? I think we're getting it helpful because yeah. that's what we were trusting. That's at. where we landed. Yeah. Um, it's worth pointing out because these aren't in the syllabus, right? If you're looking at this and like, um, I'm more confused. This is not helping, right? Then drop it. You know how sometimes we're like, oh, here's two methods. Even if you like one more than the other, you got to know both. Just tough. Sometimes we're going to say, do it this way, even if it's the way you don't like. Sorry, Farhan, I want you to do it anyway, right? Um, so sometimes, well, if it's in the syllabus, we don't give you an option. This one, we hope it helps. If it's not, don't worry about it. Okay, I've got a negation for the and statement. Now I want a negation for the or statement. And maybe you're a couple steps ahead of me already. I'm looking at this tree table down here. Let's start. Let's get rid of this for a second. Just so I'll put it So here is P or Q. To negate this, I'm going to flip everything. Everything that was true before becomes false, everything that's false becomes true. Now this is remarkably simple, isn't it? Because there's only one false thing that you want to be true. So unlike in this situation where you have a long awkward list, what's the one that you're after? Which one do you want? There's only one, right? It's 
Say it again. Not P and not Q. They have to both be true at the same time. Not P and not Q. And there's kind of a nice symmetry to this. Do you see? Okay. Um, are you are you like thinking or are you got a question? Is it the equivalent? What's the equivalent? The equivalent carrot? Like the double? Oh, oh you're talking about this. No, 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 not P implies. Oh, I see. Ah, okay, okay. So that be right. That's a really great question. Let me just repeat it, just in case. Um, I was listening to this question myself. That's like I'm completely just to Um, the question was: See how you've got this word "and" here, right? Could we replace that "and" with a two-sided arrow? With a two-sided arrow. I'm going to throw to the floor. Because I have some thoughts on this, I'm sure Mrs. Lee's uh, and our other uh, colleagues in the room also have some thoughts on it. Uh, is it rude? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to ask you to do it. Okay, um, I'm going to give ask you for a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Okay, thumbs up. Look at it closely, and maybe you want to use the English statements to help you out here. Okay, the word "and" here is, um, and you can actually substitute it anywhere to be honest. Can we substitute the word "and" for a uh, two-sided arrow? Have a think about what a two-sided arrow means. Have to think about what and could mean in this context anyway. Yes, I think it can be replaced. No, I don't think it can be replaced. I think they're, they're different. Hmm. Hold for a second, because I want you to know that come to a conclusion in your own mind. Hmm. And you know how this works. I'm going to ask all of you, okay? Okay. I'm going to do count to three, okay? Hands up, hands up in the air. Give me a fist. Alright, here we go. I'm going to count to three and then I'm going to ask you to give me a thumbs down or a thumbs up, okay? Uh, one, two, three. Which way? Oh, look. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do a count. Uh, I've got. I've got. I think majority. Yeah, okay. Most of you are saying thumbs down at the moment, okay? Including the person who posed the question. Alright, so the, the question is this way. Can we do it? Okay, someone who said no. Tell me why. Jia, you have given us some good thoughts for today. I want to see if anyone else can throw in. If not, we'll come to you, but. Come on, several of you put your thumb down, even if you're like, I don't know, it's my instinct. For what do you reckon? Um, well, the, the dual arrows, they say that like P implies Q and Q implies P, but P and Q is a separate statement because it's, well, it's just the same thing. It has to be both of these things. It can't. Because if you have one of those, with the if you have like not P with the dual arrows, then that just means that Q is true. But if you have an A, the statement is only true when you have both things. So, <laughs> yes, what you're saying is there's a difference in the relationship between P and Q. When you say and, sounds like, am I summarizing this correctly? Sounds like it's kind of a looser connection. It's like, eh, they're just, they're, they're true, right? But when you put in those, um, when you put in that double arrow, and you can see it from your answers, right? We can actually, in terms of English, our, our most succinct replacement for the double arrow is if and only if, right? So there's actually now somehow a logical connection between this. One leads to the other, and the other leads back to the one, right? Now there are, what you're actually getting at here is a really important, it wasn't where I was going to go today, but you went there, so I'm, I'm running with it. Okay. Um, what you're getting at here is a really important statistical idea. I wonder if um, I wonder if you remember this from advanced last year. Um, I don't know if you've seen this graph before. It's one of my favorites. Um, what's it telling you? <laughs> what it's telling you is, what it's telling you is, there's, there's something eerie going on. Whenever Nicolas Cage 
uh, releases a film. Uh, I don't know what the code does on this, is, but it will be kind of fun. What's going on? Well, this is this is just data, and it's true. Right? By the way, if you're wondering why it's so morbid, it's because, sadly, cause of death is something which we have very good data on. So there's lots of information on this that's publicly available from governments around the world. This is US data, by the way, because of course it is, right? Now, then you've got this matchup, right? What do we call this? It's a fancy word. Uh, it starts with C. When two things seem to happen together, one goes up, the other goes up, one goes down, the other goes down. What's it called? Correlation. This is called correlation, right? It's a really important statistical idea. A lot of the things that you see in the news about like, oh, scientists state that blah, blah, blah. They're actually talking about something like this. A correlation, two things that seem to be happening at the same time. And the important idea, and you know, right, is that correlation doesn't mean causation, causation, right? It doesn't mean that one causes the other. I really desperately hope. I mean, some indications are quite bad, to be fair. So maybe they would watch this. Who you knows? Um, but there, there isn't. There isn't. Like, that's the point of laughing at this, right? That there is clearly not a causal link. There is clearly not a causal link between these two things, even if they happened to correlate with each other. Does that make sense? I know I'm sort of laboring this point, but it's super important why that these are true. Why that we don't say that we can solve one for the other, uh, rather than just me tell you. Convinced? Is that okay? All right. Now, sorry, we were kind of um, midway through. Let me, uh, I'll just leave that. It's fine. Uh, we were kind of midway through, and I was just putting out the symmetry here. Right? The symmetry that I see is, when you're negating an AND statement, you end up with an OR statement. When you negate an OR statement, you end up with an AND statement. Nice, isn't it? And it's going to have a really important implication for, make a little subhead for me, our negations of quantifiers. Okay. Did you have something, Mrs. Lee? Okay. Now, I want you to think back to what we said for quantifiers, and I introduced some weird symbols for you. Do you remember seeing this? <laughs> we're like, we're running out of symbols and alphabets. Quick, turn something upside down. And upside down A means oh. for all values of. So I'm just going to give you an example right now. Um, actually, I'm just going to go with the example. I think you already have your book. For all values of n, where n is an integer, we could say that if you double n, you'll get an even number. Do you remember that? Yeah. And we said this is true. Okay. What would the negation of this statement look like? If we were to negate this, and I want you to think about everything that's on the board right now. Okay, I know it looks a bit different, but actually it's not so different. How would you say the opposite of this? How would you say, I think this statement is false? Now, of course, we just could put the word block out the front and just <laughs> call it a day and say we're done, right? But can we turn it into like, some language? Can we have a think about how we would unpack this? What would it mean for this to be false. How could you, we know it's true, but if you wanted to prove it false, how might you go about doing it? Hmm. What do you think? And if your end is odd, it's going to prove it wrong. If I can find yeah. a 2n that's odd, I only need to find one. one. I only need to find one. And this has to be false. Do you agree? Because this is saying every single one out there, off to infinity, both directions, it's always true. I only need to find one, this is an important counterexample. I haven't introduced this phrase yet, but I mean it's a normal English phrase. A single counterexample will disprove this, right? Now I actually have a quantifier. I actually have a symbol that says exactly this, that I don't know, I don't know what it is, but somewhere out there there has to be something that proves this. Not true. What's the language that we introduce? What's the other quantifier? Not for all, it's um, there, exists. there exists somewhere. I don't know what it is, but I think there must exist some value of n that's an integer, right? Where 2n is not even, it's odd. Does that make sense? I mean, we know this is false, but statements are either true or false, but not both. So. If this is true, this must be false. If this is true, then this must be false. That's what makes, that's what defines a negation. Does that make sense? How do we negate, this is the negation of a for all statement, ends up with a there exists a statement. How would we do it 
inner verse. Okay, now I'm going to give you a really fun one here. I um, I really like this example because, sorry, I seem to be doing this a lot today, but this is just too good to not show you. I discovered this when I was at uni, and I was like, what? How is this the case? Okay, I'm going to give you a there exists statement, and let's see what you can make of it. There exists some integer n such that n can't be written as the sum of four square numbers. I know that seems unnecessarily long and awkward, but run with me here, okay? I'm suggesting that there's some number out there, 153, 4 million and 5, whereby if you take that number, you can't write it as something squared plus something squared plus something squared plus something squared. Okay? Now, just so you understand what I mean here, let's, let's think about it for a moment. Let's think about number like, say, 10. Can you write this number? It's not square, but can you write it as the sum of four squares? It's actually not that hard, is it? Right? What's the biggest square number you can fit in here? Nine. 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 So that's three squared. What do you get left with once you take that nine out? One. You get left with one, but one's actually a square number, isn't it? So then I'm like, well, I'll just add a couple of zeros squared. So I've written 10 as a sum of four squares. Are you okay with that? No. Let's pick another one. Uh, let's say 27. Can you do this one in four squares or less? Yeah. An easy strategy is to go for the biggest square. What's the biggest square you can fit in there? Five, five squared. That leaves you with two. two. So what are you going to do next? One, one, one squared and one squared. And I've done better than zero squared. Yeah. Right? Let's see if we're going to turn. Let's try this one. It's the biggest one you can fit. Um, 11. 11. And then you're like, oh, oh what's yeah. left is 10. I already have 10. So I'm just going to go like so. Actually, you can do a lot of them, especially the small ones, in far fewer than four. Okay? But I'm suggesting to you, I claim. I propose that there is some n out there whereby n can't be written in this way. Okay. I need this constant. What would the negation of this look like? And maybe I've given you enough clues from the negation of these statements and the negation of this statement that you could come up with a negation for this one. What would it mean if this were false? Hmm. Brent, you've given us a good idea already today. I wonder if there's someone else picking through a thought in. Thank you, though. I appreciate that. Like, we, I gave you three. Maybe you're now curious and you're like trying to put some other numbers in, right? If this is false, what's the alternative? Come with me. Like, um, for all and it's part of like the, what is it, same real number of things? Integers. Integers, right? So, um, and can be written this Right. So, what I'm suggesting is, oh wait, I just tried a few. What if I could try all of them? What if it works every single time? That's for all values of n that are integers. This is the opposite, right? n can be written. Uh, I'm just going to leave that. You guys can write it. <laughs> do you think that could be possible? It seems wild, right? Could you do it with every single number? Just before I address that thought, let me just point out the parallels here, right? If you negate P and Q, number one, you're switching this conjunction and then you get negations, right? Uh, same deal here, you change this OR into an A and then you get negations, right? Here, you switch this, this is kind of a conjunction, right? This quantifier tells you something about what's to come, and then you negate whatever result you have, right? And that's what I've done here. I've swapped this there exists a value for a for all. And then I've said, well, let's write the opposite of that result. Does that make sense? <laughs> OK, spoilers. Um, n can always be written as a sum of four squares, no matter what value n you choose. A uh, really smart guy named Lagrange. Um, a physicist might know him as famous for something else, actually, but this is Lagrange's very original name. Four square theorem. Every single number, every single whole number can be written as a sum of four squares. So, that took me a little longer than I expected, but um, we really wanted to unpack some of this logic. 
we now have enough pieces to negate pretty much anything that we throw at you, right? Um, no matter what, <laughs> no matter what compound statement uh, I give you, you have enough pieces to be able to say, okay, think about what it means, think about what's being quantified here. The opposite must be whatever. 